Oh. Hey everyone, this is Dungeon RPG. I wanted to make this video for a very long time, but finally, in today's special video, I'll show you guys my Wonder Swine collection. The Wonderswan is a Japanese exclusive handheld system made by Bandai. The first Wonderswan was a black and white gaming system just like the original Game Boy, and then later they came out with the Wonderswan Color, and then a third revision in Swan Crystal. If you have ever owned a Game Boy, Game Boy Color, or GBA, then you already have a pretty good idea of what playing on the Wonderswan is like. The first Wonderswan came out in 2009. That's when Nintendo have already came out with their Game Boy Color and then the monster titles Pokemon Gold and Silver are just around the corner. So the year after Bandai came out with the Wonder Swan Color in response. And by the time the final revision Swan Crystal came out, it was directly competing with the concurrent Game Boy Advance. So commercially speaking, Bandai's Wonder Swan had only a small market share compared to Nintendo's Game Boy series. I personally started collecting for the system at uh, around the end of 2005 to the beginning of 2006. That's really when I got most of the games and accessories in my collection. I don't have anything that's extremely rare or valuable. As a matter of fact, when I first started collecting for the Wonder Swan, that was just at the end of the uh, system's life cycle, and not many people were paying attention to it, so I was able to get most of the games and consoles for extremely cheap. The two handhelds I had were the Wonder Swan Color and the Swan Crystal. Taking a look at the system super quickly, you can see that uh, it has two set of buttons. So when you're playing the system horizontally, you use uh, the X buttons as your directional and then A and B as your input. One unique thing about the system is that uh, you, you can also play it vertically to use the Y buttons as the directional and then the X button as the input. So this will be a unique way for you to be able to play those shooters vertically. It didn't have its own headphone jack, so you need to have an adapter to plug into the extension port. It's cartridge based just like the Game Boy and the GBA, and it's powered by a single AA battery that comes with its own battery holder. And if you want to keep the slim profile of the system intact, you can also buy a special rechargeable battery pack to replace the bulky battery holder. It goes in like so. And these rechargeable batteries are actually nickel metal hydrate batteries and not the lithium ion ones. And you have to get their own special battery charger as well. Here's a super quick size comparison with the Wonder Swan with a DS Lite. And comparison with a 3DS XL. It's both smaller and a lot slimmer. For the Wonder Swan color I have, it's a special bundle edition that comes with a copy of the first Final Fantasy game. And this is what the game cartridges will look like. And you can see I actually played this game for like 18 hours back then. And on the Wonder Swan, there's a button on the side that lets you adjust the contrast of the screen. There you go. Very light to very dark. And the later revision Swan Crystal came with a TFT screen that has a reduced screen tearing and shadows, so it works better for action games. And just like the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, both the Wonder Swan Color and Swan Crystal have a reflective screen with no backlight, but the screen do look really sharp and the colors look really vibrant under a good light source. And of course, the highlight of this video is I want to show you guys all the games I have. And for the system being made by Bandai, of course, they have all of those Bandai exclusive IPs like Gundam and Digimon and Digimon and more Digimon. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely had a lot of exclusive Gundam and Super Robo Wars games. The limitation is that a Wonder Swan cartridge is only limited to 128 megabits, which is only like 16 megabytes. So a lot of the Wonder Swan games are really short, but at least from my experience, they're all really, really well made. The only loose cartridge I have is Dark Eyes Battlegate. This is a tactical RPG that runs on an isometric grid. I actually didn't play this game too much because back then my Japanese is a lot limited compared to now and the game was actually crushingly difficult. 
And this game here, it's uh, Hataraku Chocobo. I don't know whether you guys can tell on the camera, the uh, text here is actually very textured. And despite the package, this is for Wonders One, this game is actually in full color. Uh, it says here, it's New Frontier Reclamation <laughs> Chocobo. And of course, it's made by Squaresoft. <laughs> Chocobo is from Final Fantasy, obviously. The illustration and character design is so adorable, and you know, so is the Chocobo. And back then, I actually purchased a, a strategy guide just to play this game. As you can see the Chocobo is so cute. <laughs> you can see the beautiful illustrations. So pretty. And basically, this game is like a Harvest Moon on crack. <laughs> with a rather complex system of uh, exploration, harvesting, building, landscaping, terraforming. Basically, I just uttered a whole bunch of words that I don't really understand. You have different species of chocobo that have different stats and uh, different things they're good at, <laughs> and you use them to explore and develop the land. I have to be honest with you guys, back then I never figured out how this game works. It was just way too complex for me, even with the strategy guide. Just look at this, this is like so complicated, but uh, I'm sure it, uh, Squaresoft spent a lot of time developing this game and, and making it functional. So so yeah, that's Hataraku Chocobo or Working Chocobo, made by Squaresoft. And Kaosuke Michigarashi Mono, despite what the game made it sound like, is not a car battle game, but a tactical RPG when you employ different units that are symbolized by these collectible cards. This is a true black and white game. And then the package actually came with some of the collectible cards that have uh, the character's stats. I've never opened these and I don't know if, whether I should now. This was one of the games that I suffered from the ROM capacity in that it's super short. If I remember correctly, there were only like 5 or 10 stages in total. So even before you have time to finish reading the instruction manual, you could have finished the game itself. And as far as you can tell the action commands apart from one another, you'll be able to play this game. So if you want, that's, this will definitely be a game that I recommend you to pick up for a couple of dollars and to be able to finish in one setting. Kiro Senshi Gundam Seed for the Wonderswan. This was one of the later Wonderswan Color and Swan Crystal exclusive games. This came out just when the Gundam Seed was airing. So it only has the first part of Gundam Seed's plus up right until Kira gets the Freedom Gundam. So it doesn't spoil any of the later stories. I think back then the Freedom Gundam was already a spoiler. They haven't revealed the Freedom Gundam yet. And this game, this is what I would call a arcade style horizontal scroll action shooter. You're obviously playing as Kira. You'll be piloting the original Ale Strike Gundam and later the Sword Strike and then Launcher Strike. I actually played through the game, this game several times in its entirety and it was pretty fun. Again, exclusive to the system. And this is Ark the Lad, Kishin Fukatsu, the resurrection of the Machine Lord. If this is a spin-off game in the Ark the Lad series. I think most of the other games have been localized and they were on the PlayStation 2, I believe. This is a traditional RPG with the artwork and uh, world settings very similar to Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. And you know, you got your airships, ruins, ancient towns, kind of like a post-apocalyptic world. And then you're climbing towers, fighting machines left over from an ancient civilization and things like that. And uh, once you enter the battle, and then you actually go into a grid-based tactical RPG type of battle system. I played this game for about 20 hours right up until I reached this branching point in the story. I have to choose I have to be either getting Alec as my next character or uh, Lisa as my ne next character. So I just kind of stuck deciding which character I want to choose uh, to play as. And this was the exception of the Wonderspawn game in terms of game length. I think the story of this game will last you about uh, 35 to 40 hours, so it's a fairly lengthy game. But yeah, you definitely need to be able to read a little bit of Japanese for the very least to enjoy this RPG. And then this game is uh, Namco Super Wars. You can see there's some iconic Namco character. Valkyrie is the only one that I recognize. Just like all the games that end with wars like Super Robo Wars and Famicom Wars, this is a strategy RPG. This is the game I had in my console that I'm playing right now. So I haven't finished this so I can't really comment on the length of the game. 
but it is super difficult. Like, like one of the first battles is just to get the stage clear bonus. You need to finish it in like four turns, and I'm at turn 19, and I still haven't finished the battle yet. So a nice colorful game manual that actually uh, tells you a little bit about the different characters. So again, strategy RPG exclusive to the Wonders one. And this is uh, Yaksok no Chi Riviera, which is also known as Riviera the Promised Land. Was, this was the first RPG in Sting's Depth Heaven series. First came out on the Wonder Swan, as a matter of fact. And then you probably know that later on this game got ported to the, the GBA, and then later on the PlayStation Portable. And it's a unique RPG where you will explore a map or dungeon with the different characters that you encounter. And the path you choose to select or take in the dungeon will actually determine how the game plays out. And all of the enemy encounters plays like your traditional RPG. I actually first played this game on the GBA and then later on found out the Wonders 1 versions was actually the original. This is uh, X Card of Fate. If you're a Clam fan, you're probably a lot familiar with the animation X than I am. I just barely know the characters. In fact, I, I know Kamui, <laughs> that's who I know. And just like the game's title, this is a card battle game based on the X animation. Again, this is a pretty short game that you can finish probably just in one setting. And just the funny aside, I actually finished this game when I was in my second year, I think in the semester's pathophysiology class. I was, it was one of those like lunchtime lectures they just shoehorn in for the semester. So I was just playing X Card of Fate during the class for the entire semester and beat it. I didn't do so well in the class, but at least I finished the game. And this is uh, Makaito Shi Saga. If I remember correctly, the Saga series RPG never came out in English, but uh, in Japan it was always regarded as pretty classic. This was actually one of the games I had that I never played very much. Wild Card? This is also made by Squaresoft, and now come to think of this, Square was actually a pretty solid supporter of the Wondrous One. This is another card battle RPG, again with really beautiful illustrations. You know, all the talented artists we had back then are probably all making illustrations for the mobile gacha games right now, so that's a regret. Unfortunately, that's something we'll never have back again. But yeah, super nostalgic. And a couple of limited edition games I have here is uh, With You, Mitsumete Itai. This was a game that I always thought it was part of the Memory Off series just because the character design, but actually I don't think it's related. It's what you would call these days a visual novel or a dating sim. It has a figure of one of the game's characters inside, and you can tell I've never opened this. <laughs> Random Return to Earth. This is a uh, SD version mecha game. <laughs> Again, Wonder Swan exclusive. Here's what's inside the package. Inside it came with parts to a posable figure of the, of the main mecha, and I've never opened this. But I did play the game a little bit, it's pretty fun. <laughs> if you remember Super Dimension Fortress Macross on the GBA, this game plays kind of like that. So yeah, now that I've showed you guys my console and most of my games, and here are some of the accessories I have for my Wondrous One. This was the Senyu Chudenki <laughs> a special battery charger I had that you would need to use for the rechargeable batteries. And uh, this is what the battery charger looks like. It has a standard plug-in. It opens like so. And you just put your battery inside. As a matter of fact, this is one of the uh, rechargeable batteries I had that I was just charging. Let's see if this works, shall we? There we go. So after all these years, the battery still holds the charge and works perfectly. And this is what the package looks like for the rechargeable battery. I got a black one for the original Wonders one, and the clear green one you guys just saw, also for the original Wonders one. And then this clear one is for the Wonders one color. This came out much later, and uh, actually this is the only piece of battery that's died on me. If I remember correctly, this no longer holds a charge and I don't really know how to fix it, so I'm just kind of keeping it around as a souvenir and hoping that it wouldn't explode on me. 
there is a slight difference in the shape of the battery. You can see the Wonderswan color one has a second curvature here on top compared to the original Wonderswan. So if you use the original Wonderswan battery, you'll be missing a little bit of the curvature here in the console's body, but that's not really a big deal. And remember I talked about uh, the system doesn't have its headphone jack, so you will need to have a headphone adapter. And this is the one I have. It comes with a headphone adapter, plugs into the system's expansion slot. So now you're going to have a port for any 3.5 millimeter headphone. It has a volume control dial just on the side here. And these are the actual Wondrous One headphones that I have. These are actually pretty good headphones. In terms of what's really missing in my collection, there are a few games such as the Rockman EXE Wonderswan, which is a side-scrolling platformer based on the Mega Man Battle Network series that's worlds better than network transmission. Of course, all the Super Robo Wars games are good games to pick up for the value. And also a uh, Atelier series game, uh, Marie and uh, Ellie, Futari no Atelier, that's uh, exclusive to the Wonderswan. If you're just getting into collecting for the Wonders One, there are some really expensive titles. Back then, there was a software called Wonder Witch, which was basically like a developer's kit for the Wonders One that people can use to make their own games. And they actually held competitions for the Wonder Witch. And for two years, the winners of the contest had their games made and published in very small quantities. And of course, that's your shooter, Judgment Silver Sword, and a dungeon crawler, Dicing Knight, period. And those games are ex insanely expensive. You're probably looking at like $1,000 per game. So this system definitely has its own fair share of rare and expensive games and accessories. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me in this video where I shared my Wonderswan collection. If you are also a fan of the system, I would definitely love to hear what are some of the collectibles and games that you have for the system. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll make sure to answer them. And thanks so much for watching. This is Dungeon RPG. I'll see you guys soon in another video. Take care.